it's time to talk about the great canon, which is probably okay, the is. best headline I've ever written and the best photo <laughs> I ever got to pick for an article. I don't think we can, can show the photo because our show CMS doesn't show it. Okay. I wish we could. Maybe we can't. I don't know. Anyways, it's a giant canon because it's about the great canon. Anyways, let's get to the subject here. So China has this great firewall. Most people know about it. Most people are familiar with the idea. It just basically blocks anyone from accessing certain websites if you're inside Chinese borders. They also have an offensive weapon called the Great Cannon, and they only roll it out on special occasions to take down websites that the Communist Party of China doesn't want anyone to have access to. So in the past, we've had Google being hit by the Great Cannon. We've had Amazon being hit by it. Basically, what this means is China redirects a ton of web traffic to one domain in order to shut it down. Uh, the analogy I used in this argument or in this piece was the Macy's Day Parade running down a small town city street and just clogging it up. You can't get to anything on the website at all. Now we're seeing that the Chinese government is using it against Ethereum mining pool FlexPool means they're taking this pretty seriously. Back in June, they banned Bitcoin mining and they followed up with a bunch of legislation and actions against peer-to-peer -peer transfers of crypto, against mining pools, basically anything having to do with crypto technology, they were going against aggressively. And now they are deploying this great cannon to try to shut down these websites because people are still trying to access them. Zach, I'm going to throw this one up to you. It's fascinating to see like almost a Cold War 2.0 situation playing out with mining pools like that's not something i would have considered happening but it crypto is firmly uh between the us and china right now i just love this thing for learning about the great canon i was ignorant of the great canon until yesterday uh you know you hear about the great firewall of china but it's cool to see the corollary thing in effect the canon which sort of like enforces uh you know like like dictates in the web space from the Chinese authorities. So that to me was really interesting. And clearly, you know, crypto has been in the crosshairs of Chinese authorities for a number of months now. Uh, you know, initially when some of these bans came out, people were saying, oh, same thing as before. I think we're clearly seeing that this is an escalation of some of the things that we had seen before and that the, uh, the resources that are being devoted to making sure that this mandate is enforced. It's quite interesting. And I thought this was a really revealing and uh, interesting way to sort of, you know, again, peel back the curtain and take a look at what's going on when it comes to enforcing these crypto bans in China. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 it's also crazy. I mean, I think it's also worth mentioning that like the Bitcoin hash rate is sort of back to where it was before Bitcoin mining was banned in china so it's also crazy to see how this marketplace uh responds and evolves so quickly uh relative to these the actions of these state actors so all in all good stuff great picture loved it really want to throw it to naomi though for her takes on state actors uh messing with messing with the flow of 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 bits online messing Not with cool. the flow it's interesting because they're talking about it in terms of like oh well they kind of deny using these things it's actually a very common malware a uh, type of malware that infects your computer and turns different computers into minions that then you know creates a ddos attack against someone so if this stuff is technically feasible it's obviously it's obvious that governments are utilizing it this stuff just doesn't exist and then governments don't take advantage of it and uh and china is notorious in in taking advantage of all of this stuff and so it makes a lot of sense that they're using this to their advantage to stop people getting access uh, to certain websites if we're also looking at how Xi has really clamped down on messaging in China as well on the narrative on propaganda this year has really been a consolidation year because he's looking to you know extend his reign uh, even further and so controlling the narrative is so su supremely important and that means controlling access to what people can um, uh, get to on the internet. It means blocking off websites that are not approved, blocking off any sort of narratives that is not completely uh, created by the CCP. And so it it makes a lot of sense that they're doing this and coming down harsher than ever. Uh, given that Xi really is focused on this consolidation of power, you can't consolidate power if people have rival narratives that are poking holes in your regime or undermining it in any way. So um, it's also interesting that mining is really 
at the forefront of what they consider threatening. Uh, if people have control of their own money, if they're finding a way to get money that is not sanctioned by the government and that money can easily flow across state borders, that's an incredibly powerful tool right there. And the CCP obviously recognizes that. The people of China obviously recognize that too. And that's why they're trying to um, you know, continue with this mining operations, even though it has been banned in the country. A lot of places have just you know, seen the writing, writing on the wall a while ago, left the country. But there are still some small operations that are trying to make things work there and fly under the radar. But now the government's just turning their sights on them. We cannot have any holes in our sieve. Um, and so it's, uh, yeah, just very interesting that it is such a, a threat to China right now. It's sort of, sort of a testament to the power of cryptocurrency. But I'll throw it to you, Jen, for your take. Yeah, I just wanted to add in a quick tidbit before before we wrap up. This was also the first time that I heard about the Grand Canon. And I think it's so important when we talk about what's happening. The in Great Canon. Oh, Jen, sorry, the, the Great, great Canon. <laughs> I, I just heard about grand, it. I'm great. already messing up the <laughs> messing up the name. Grand Canyon. The great, that, grand Canon no, is kind of cool. Grand Yeah, right? Grand, okay. Well, no, anyways. Canon. That's what America would have. <laughs> Yeah, the grand they would have the grand canon. So Trump would do. The grand the grand we canon. probably do have the grand canon. We probably have a secret grand canon somewhere. I mean, I'm oh, sure. Obviously, it, we do. Obviously. 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 It's grand. I just, okay, sorry, John, to interrupt you. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just think it's so important when we're talking about what happens in China. So we, uh, not us, but I think we often talk about what's happening in China as it's happening over there and it's never going to happen over here. But it's so important for us to talk about, um, you know, these attacks and what the government is doing because it wouldn't take much for these things to happen in our own backyard. So I think it's important to be aware of that.